what is up guys, Karma Medic here, and welcome back to another dose. If you're new to the channel, then hi, my name is Nasser, and I'm now a fourth year medical student studying at King's College London. And as you've probably seen, we have just crossed 750,000 subscribers, which is three quarters of a million, which is absolutely insane to think about. I just, the, num the numbers almost don't mean anything anymore. They're so big and so difficult to picture in my head or comprehend or make sense of that it just doesn't make sense. It's, it's very, very difficult to put it into perspective. A little bit of house cleaning before we start, almost as a reminder for myself of where I am in life. I'm currently at the end of my fourth year of medical school, crossing 750,000 subscribers. Pretty crazy timing. I am now officially on TikTok. I'm having an absolute blast making videos over there. If you don't already follow me, please make sure you do. I'm posting there almost daily or pretty much daily. The next thing is that we are trying to hit 1 million subscribers by the time I graduate and become a doctor. If you're watching this assumptions video, then you're likely someone who is a hardcore viewer of the Karma Medic channel. You likely care about me or my journey to becoming a doctor and what it is that I'm doing on my YouTube. So I need your help. If you know anyone in your life or think other people on the internet could benefit from my videos, whether that's my medical school vlogs, my study with me videos, my educational videos, time management, things like that, please feel free to share my channel with them, to tell them about the channel, and let's reach a million subscribers as soon as possible. So I asked you guys on Instagram if you had any assumptions about me or my life or my studying or whatever. I've organized them into a whole bunch of folders. We've got friends, girlfriend, high school, life, medicine, miscellaneous, money, motivation, personality, religion, social media, studying and productivity, YouTube, food, and free time. So yeah, we've got quite a lot to get through. Grab yourself a coffee or a drink, a snack, sit back, relax. I'll leave chapters and links so that you guys can skip to any part of the video that you like, but make sure you watch the whole thing. And without further ado, let's get started. All right, so let's start with personality because I got quite a few interesting assumptions over here. So we've got, you're an introvert and extremely shy in real life. You're sometimes very shy and you don't like being around people too much because you don't like talking a lot. You're an introvert, you're an introvert, introverted. You're a shy guy, you're shy. You're actually quite a shy person when it comes to meeting people. You're an absolute introvert. I think you guys get the point by now. So I'm not gonna lie, I was actually really surprised to get this many assumptions about me being shy or an introvert because I honestly feel like that couldn't be further from the truth. I'm someone who has a pretty easy time in social settings. I love meeting new people and talking to new people finding out what it is that they like, what it is they don't like, whether we have anything in common, etc. And this is something that I've been thinking about for quite a while now because multiple people have told me in my real life, so like my friends and people from my university have told me that I come across way less cool and way lamer on camera than I am in real life. And I've said this quite a bit on my podcast, The Karma Cast, which you should obviously subscribe to if you haven't already, that I want my personality in real life to be the exact same as my personality on camera. And maybe it's the fact that, you know, filming yourself on a camera is a lot more artificial. And especially when you're out in public, I feel like it's a lot more difficult to be really open and yourself while holding a camera to your face. But yeah, there is this discrepancy for some reason that I wanna work on bringing together and matching entirely. The other thing is that when you're making videos and putting them out for absolutely everyone to see. I feel like that is a really, no, I feel like I know that that's a really scary thing. And you wanna make sure that you come across in the most professional, the most you know proper kind way as possible. And so probably a little bit of the discrepancy between my in real life personality and my camera personality is that I know that this is going to be seen by a whole bunch of people, including my future colleagues in the hospital, people at my university, whether that be faculty or friends. And so, you know, I always wanna make sure that I'm as professional as possible. A lot of your comments on my recent vlogs have been saying, oh, we're getting see more of Nasser's personality, his personality is finally coming out, things like that, which I'm which I'm really happy to hear. So I'm working on it. I'm trying to match my personality in real life and on camera to be the exact same. So we'll get there. My assumption is that you haven't always been this productive. Um, I've actually been this productive forever, pretty much. When I was in high school, I was productive in the sense that I would, you know, very efficiently finish my homework and then move on to playing video games or hanging out with my friends or whatever. I was still using all of my time as much as possible, not really sitting there scrolling through my phone or anything like that. And then obviously in university, most of my time being productive was spent studying and preparing for exams and working on assignments and things like that. And now in medical school with, you know, this whole YouTube channel and all the extra things that I'm doing outside of medical school, yeah, I'm, I feel like I'm at peak productivity. So I've, I've been like this for a very long time. I assume that you're very kind and patient with the people who wrong you. One of the main sort of principles that I live with in my life is that I'm very open to new people that I meet. I'm more likely to trust you quite easily at the beginning. 
I'm, I'm a very open person. But if you lose that trust from me, it's pretty much impossible to get back. I'm very easy to give it, but it's very hard to get back if you've lost it. Um, you have a secret crazy side you let out once a year. Um, I definitely have a secret crazy side that I let out all the time. You know, I'm studying very, very hard for long periods of time. And then there's always, you know, those uh, weekends or nights out where you let off a lot of steam, you go out and you have lots of fun. Um, I'm not always a robot sitting at my desk and studying. You're super organized and clean. You hate mess, absolutely. My room doesn't look like this because I'm filming a video. My room looks like this, honestly, 99% of the time. Yes, of course, my room gets messy, but I clean it like five or 10 minutes later. Absolutely hate mess. You're a perfectionist. That's a tricky one. I like to think that anything that I do in life, I do to as high of a standard as I can possibly do it. But that is always, always, always in balance with being efficient and not spending too much time doing something, thinking about what the value is from the time I'm putting into this project and making sure I don't exceed time input from value output. So yes, I like to do everything very neatly to a high standard, but at the same time, it needs to get done quickly if there's not a lot of value coming out of it from the time I'm putting into it. Hopefully that makes sense. You don't stop arguing or debating until they acknowledge you're right. This is the complete opposite of me. I despise these types of arguments where people are trying so hard to prove that they're right or like get their point across. For me personally, I'll explain my position or my opinion once, maximum twice. And if the other person doesn't agree with me, that is completely fine. I acknowledge that we can have different opinions and I just move on with my life. I despise these types of debates and arguments. You're insecure about your appearance. You know, that's a, that's a funny one. I think appearance for me is something that I've never really thought about. When I was in high school and I had horrible acne all over my face, it didn't bother me that much. And I think at the time it was mainly because I was so focused on just playing video games and having fun with my friends that I didn't really care about what I looked like or being attractive to girls or anything like that. And then sort of as I've grown older, luckily and thankfully, I've always been quite happy with what I look like. I don't really look in the mirror and see any imperfections or things that I don't like. I can always get bigger and more jacked in the gym. So, you know, I'm always working on that. But other than that, thankfully and luckily, it's not something that I think about. It's not something that I'm insecure about. You are very emotional. I think I have a very, very bad personality trait and habit where I just shove all of my emotions into a box and I close them off and I hide them away. Same with anything that's on my mind that's bothering me, that is like stressing me out. I'll literally put it in a box shove that to the side of my brain and close that box. It's very, very useful when you have tons of things to do and you need to move on and you need to get stuff done, studying, work, side hustle, jobs, YouTube, whatever. It's very useful for that type of life. As far as processing your emotions, being a reflective person, it's a horrible personality trait. And it's something that I'm definitely working on. I want to be more in touch with my emotions and reflect on my emotions as I go through life. You don't like to talk about your feelings. Yeah, that goes hand in hand with what I just said. You don't get angry very easily. Nothing brings you down. This I really think is so true. The things that upset me or anger me in life or make me feel bad are like so, 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 so few. 90% of things that happen in my life, if they bother me or stress me out or whatever, it's literally water under the bridge. I literally brush off anything in my life that doesn't make me happy, that bothers me, that stresses me out. I feel like there's so much you can, you if you wanted to, you could focus so much on the negative things that are happening in your life and it can affect the rest of your life. And I try very, very hard to spend very little time thinking about those things and focusing all of my energy on things that make me happy and things that I do want to be doing. You're not as friendly as you seem to be in your videos. I might be wrong. I'm definitely way more friendly in real life, if anything. <laughs> uh, definitely, yeah. A lot of people say to me that before they meet me, if they see me walking around campus or something and I'm listening to music, they feel very intimidated because I look very serious and I always look like I'm on a mission running around the place. But that once they meet me, they're like, oh my God, you're so much more friendly than I thought. So I'm way more friendly in real life. Faye Bait <laughs> says that you learn how to speak so calmly from Buddhist monks, the only explanation. Do I speak calmly? I feel like uh, Anas, who was also on my podcast, shout out the Karma Cast, he speaks very calmly. He has like the most soothing voice ever. Um, but if you think I have a soothing voice, thank you very much. That's a nice compliment. Alexia Mig, you guys might, might know of her. You are secretly a robot. I think I am a little bit of a robot. I really do. I think, like I said, I can shut things off very easily in my brain and emotionally and just push them to the side. If there's a task in front of me that I need to get done, I will do it right then and there. I really don't procrastinate pretty much anything. I'm working on something almost the whole day, whether that's studying, YouTube, exercise, anything at all. I'm constantly doing something that I feel is adding value or is being productive in my life. So I guess I am a little bit of a robot. It's true, but I'm trying to work on it. I'm trying to be more non-robot in my interactions with people. You're not really a people person, uh, but trying to be one because you're now an influencer. Nope, I'm absolutely a people person and I have been my whole life. You don't have emotional breakdowns or burnouts. No, I don't. The last time I cried was in 
2017 and I remember it very clearly. I've wanted to cry and have come very close to crying several times since then, but I, but I haven't. And that's also something that I'm trying to work on, letting myself cry and be more emotional because not crying is not the way to go. Don't do it. You have a different personality outside of YouTube, like a much cooler one. Yes, we addressed this in a previous question. Apparently I'm much cooler in real life than I come across on YouTube. I feel like you're a very private person, even though you vlog about your life. Yes, absolutely. I love to keep my privacy intact. And you know, as much as I do share online, as much as I vlog, I really show you guys what I want to show you. And my private life, time spent with friends, time spent with my girlfriend and family and all those types of things is very private. One of my biggest fears with this whole YouTube thing is that I will one day lose my privacy and my online life will mix with my real life and everyone will know everything about me. Yeah, that's definitely one of my biggest fears. I like my privacy, I want to keep my privacy and I still wanna make all these videos and share everything that I love talking about and that I'm passionate about. So it's a difficult balance sometimes, it really is, but I think I'm doing a good job. I assume that you are very competitive in nature. I like, I like a little bit of competition, but it's definitely not like one of the defining traits about me. The people who know me wouldn't say Nasser is a competitive person. I don't think that's the case. You are confident enough to be different than other medical students. Absolutely. One of the things I like most about myself is that I'm confident in pretty much everything that I do. And I don't care about looking stupid or asking stupid questions or doing something wrong. I do not care one bit. I would rather do that action, fail, get it wrong, whatever, and learn from the experience than not do it at all or be shy. And yeah, there's like this stereotype of medics being like, I don't know, really snobby, really studious, uh, snaky, blah, 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 blah. I've never been like that and I never will be like that. And there's plenty of room in medical school to be a completely normal, nice, kind person. And there are plenty of those people as well. Um, so yeah, absolutely. All right, so that's it for personality. Now let's talk about friends. So we've got, my assumption is that you don't have friends in college. I assume you don't have a lot of friends and your social life is poor. Okay, <laughs> fair enough assumption, I guess. The truth is that one of the things I'm very lucky about is that I have too many friends that I can't see them all enough. I can't spend enough time with each of them and I can't you know, do all the social uh, interactions and events that I want to do. I feel very, very blessed to have three sets of friend groups. So I've got my friends that I went to high school with in Greece. There's about a group of 10 to 15 of them who feel like my brothers and sisters. We meet regularly here in London, well, when we could. And yeah, I, I love them to death. They're very, very close to me. Then there's a second group of friends that I made at the University of Toronto when I was doing my first degree over there. And those guys are just some of the best people I've met in my life. I really, really love them. And I'm sure we're gonna be friends for a long, long time. And now that I'm here in Kings, I have got a third circle of friends, probably the smallest of the three circles of friends that I have. So no, assumption is false. I'm very, very lucky to be surrounded by some pretty amazing people in my life. Next assumption, uh, that you are the type of person who has lots of friends and is great at relationships. Okay, so <laughs> literally the exact opposite of the first one. Yeah, I think I answered this one. All right, for the next one, let's do religion. Plenty of you people have asked me about my religion. This is has been one of the most frequently commented things for a very long time. I don't know why people are so interested in it. Here we go. So we've got, my assumption is that you might be an atheist. You are a Muslim and somewhat Persian ethically. Nope, I'm Jordanian Palestinian. I assume you're a Muslim. I assume you're an atheist. Are you a Muslim? Are you a Muslim? Assume you're religious. You are a Muslim, religious person. You don't follow Arabic traditions. Are you Muslim? Blah, 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 blah. All right. So I grew up in a Muslim household. Both my parents are practicing uh, Muslims. When I was younger, I was a lot more religious than I am now. I do consider myself to be Muslim. I do believe in a God, but I wouldn't consider myself to be a religious person. I never prayed five times a day. I never even prayed once a night. I sort of used to pray every now and again, very loosely. And sort of as I've grown older and older, I've become less and less in touch with religion and less and less in touch with uh, Arabic traditions. So for example, fasting is something that I did ever since I was a kid, every single year. Um, up until I went to university. And then once I went to university, I stopped fasting. Not sure why, to be honest. I think that first year that I was there, I felt like I was away from home, away from my family. And I felt like there wasn't that community environment or that community aspect of other people fasting with me and going through it with me at the same time. And I decided not to fast and then I haven't looked back since. So my overall thoughts on religion are that I think it's a good thing if it provides guidance for you, if it sets sort of some rules for you to follow, some goals to aspire to, some personality traits or characteristics to aspire towards. I think religion is very good from that aspect. There's a lot of other things that I don't really like about religion as well. And for me personally, I see religion as a relationship between me and God. I do believe in a God. And yeah, it's sort of like something between me and my God, how I choose to interact with God or pray or not pray and do all these things. I see it as a very uh, individual relationship, not so much as this big community thing that we think about as religion. Obviously I understand everyone has a different relationship and I completely respect anyone's relationship with
with their religion. That's completely fine. That's just my own. All right, next, let's move on to YouTube. We've got Kisi who says, I assume that you've sacrificed a lot of things to get where you are now, social life, friends, and hobbies. I've definitely sacrificed a lot of things for this YouTube channel. Since I upload on a weekly basis, there have been many, many nights where, you know, we're going out for drinks or we're meeting at a friend's house or there's like some social event or something. And I know that I need to get some editing done so that my video can be ready for Thursday. And I've decided to stay in and work on that video um, and not go out and do that thing. And the reason is that, you know, YouTube for me is something that I enjoyed so much. It was such, it has, always been such a great creative relief and outlet for me that you know staying home to edit a video or film a video is the equivalent well not the equivalent but it provides me as much value as going out and having a social event and so there's definitely been lots of times where i've chosen youtube over other things in my life whether that be friends family social events etc not to make it sound like i'm ignoring those other aspects of my life because i really do believe i've had a very good balance throughout but there are times when you know youtube takes priority in my life similar to there are times when all those other things take priority in my life as well my assumptions that you don't like to tell your friends you have a YouTube channel because you feel sort of shy. I don't know, something like that. So this was definitely true when I first started my YouTube channel. I made a conscious decision from the beginning that I was gonna tell absolutely no one. I was gonna do this all on my own and just you know go out there, make my videos and try and help people get accepted to medical school. And the reason that I did that is because I didn't want the additional pressure of knowing that people who I know are watching these videos as well and what they might be thinking, what their opinions might be. I didn't want that to sort of affect my bigger goal, which was to actually help people get accepted to medical school. And I knew that if I thought about those opinions and if I had that as part of the process, it would affect me. And I, and I remember vividly saying to Alexia, I said to her, when I have 400 subscribers, that's when I'm gonna feel confident telling my close friends that I have a YouTube channel because 400 people is an absolutely insanely huge, big number of people to be supporting my work and liking what I do. And it will be at that point that I feel confident enough to tell my friends, which is insane to think about how much numbers change and how every time you reach a new milestone, that's the baseline that gets set. And every time you get higher, 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 your baseline gets higher and higher and higher and you become happy with uh, less and less and less and you always want more and more and more anyways I got a little bit off track so yeah I remember at the beginning I was definitely shy about uh, telling my friends that I had a YouTube channel and it took a little bit of time and courage for me to feel confident in saying it and now it's something that I'm unbelievably proud of I mean I was always proud of it but there's this crazy stigma and thing that we do in social environments which is that People who are trying to, uh, you know, grow an Instagram page or a YouTube channel or a TikTok channel or whatever, people think of that as lame and uncool and something that is, you know, not cool to do until they cross some sort of magical threshold of a number, let's say 10,000 subscribers or 10,000 views, and then it suddenly becomes cool. And I don't know why we do this as a society. We look down on people who are trying to grow these social platforms until they've reached some magical number. And then we're like, oh, suddenly, you know, you're doing something that's cool. You're doing something that's interesting. You have viewers, you have subscribers, you have fans, whatever it is. And so I hate that mentality. And I'm trying to break it down into people around me who are, you know, starting YouTube channels, starting Instagram pages. I'm trying to break down those stigmas and, and change that for sure. I assume that there are YouTubers you're jealous of. I'm jealous of absolutely nobody, whether that's on YouTube or in real life. A lot of you might be like, oh, he's lying, blah, blah. I don't care. I'm so happy and I'm so confident in my life and what I'm doing. There's literally nothing more I could want. Great close friends, I've got them. A loving girlfriend, I've got them. A loving family, I've got them. This YouTube channel that people seem to love and subscribe to and watch, I've got it. Literally every electronic I could possibly want in my whole life is sitting on this desk. There is, I'm, I'm left wanting nothing. Thing. I feel so lucky and so privileged and so happy in my in my position in life. I forgot to add on to that a satisfying degree and career that I'm working towards. I'm so, 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 so lucky in all aspects of my life, like touch wood a million times. My mom is gonna be mad at me for saying all this. She's gonna wanna bring up that blue eye to take away the iron. I'm, I'm, I feel so grateful for every aspect of my life. There's literally nothing more that I could want, nothing that I could be jealous of, thank God. YouTube is the main reason you study hard. I have been studying very, very hard long before I turned on the camera and told YouTube about it. Would do YouTube full-time rather than being a doctor? Absolutely not. YouTube is very fun. I enjoy it so much. It's a fantastic side hobby and side hustle, but where I derive my happiness and gratefulness and personal satisfaction is from the fact that I'm working towards becoming a doctor, is from the fact that I'm studying and learning and seeing patients. That's what brings me satisfaction inside. I love YouTube and it's absolutely amazing, but that's not where my long-term goals lie. You never had anxiety 
I, interesting story actually, there was one time in Canada where I was sitting at my desk studying a couple weeks leading up to an exam and suddenly out of nowhere I had this intense, intense chest pain. I started feeling lightheaded. I felt like I couldn't breathe because I had this pleuritic pain every time I breathed in. And I actually ended up calling the ambulance on myself. I called 911 and they were like, is there a fire? And I was like, no. And they're like, is someone bleeding? And I was like, no. And they're like, okay, what's happening? And I was like, I think I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> this was at like 21 years old before I'd studied medicine properly and known that that was very, very unlikely for me. But yeah, I was, I was so scared that day. And basically the conclusion that we came to is that I probably had an anxiety attack. So yeah, I've had that one more time in my life. It is extremely unpleasant that hopefully answers your question. Journey to Med says, you want to do YouTube for as long as possible. You don't want to be a YouTuber forever. I would love to have some sort of online presence, make some sort of content, whether that's YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, whatever the next social media platform is. I would love to do this for a long time. I enjoy it so much. I gain so much value from it. So in some way, shape or form, I will be on the internet. I'm not going anywhere. So make sure you subscribe. <laughs> your next video is going to be a banger. Obviously, you guys already know that. And every video is a banger. Like, comment and subscribe. Are you going to post videos on YouTube even after becoming a doctor? Yes, I hope so. I would love um, to make videos about my experience being a doctor, obviously within uh, patient confidentiality and all the very strict rules and restrictions that I'm gonna have talking about my work and my practice when I become a doctor, but I'm sure that we'll find some sort of way to keep this going. You still get a bit scared while I, I think that's about to say vlogging in public. Yes, absolutely. When I vlog in public, sometimes I feel like I don't care and I have the courage and the energy and I just do it and I don't even think about it. And other times I literally have to tell myself like, okay, Nasser, come on, you're gonna do it now pull up the camera and start talking. It depends where I am, how many people there are, you know, it depends on so many things, but I definitely still get scared when I vlog in public. You really cherish the people around you and hopefully us. Like I said before, I feel so grateful uh, to be surrounded by the people who I am surrounded by and also so grateful for the people who watch these videos and actually leave me nice comments and like my video and seem to actually derive value from it. It's absolutely crazy that I can reach, you know, people from all over the world, all ages from like making videos in my room. I'm incredibly grateful for, for all of this. I know that none of this came easy, that's for sure. And I appreciate every single person who watches my videos. So thank you. You sometimes laugh at yourself when editing videos. I laugh at myself all the time. I'm constantly laughing at things that I said, actions that I did. Um, that's definitely true. This is a good one. You only show the positive side on camera for us, but you two have days when you're down. I will preface this by saying that again, very, very, very lucky, very, very grateful. Like there are so few things that bring me down and make me upset. And like, I have so few bad days because I genuinely just brush things off my shoulder. If something's stressing me, if something's bothering me, I literally don't think about it. I'm just like, I don't want this energy in my life and I just don't think about it. But of course I do have my down days and I do have days where things are just not going right and I am sad. Now picture me having a bad day and things are not going well and I'm like sad and, and down. The last thing that I wanna do is pick up a camera and start talking to it <laughs> and like, I like pretending that I'm happy. I would never want to do that because that sounds very horrible. And I also don't really want to turn on a camera and you know, lay out all of my problems to a camera and vent to a camera. And there's two reasons for that. One, I think that people don't care to begin with. Why would anyone want to listen to my problems and hear about a bad day that I'm having? And then the second thing is that back to the previous conversation I was having about my privacy, I am deadly scared about losing my privacy uh, to the internet and having somehow my entire life be public, be online. That's something that I really don't want to do. And so times when I'm feeling down, when I'm feeling sad, you know, that is a very personal thing. That's a very personal private experience. And the last thing that I want to do is sort of put that online for other people to have a look at or have opinions on and share their thoughts about. So that's another reason where I, why I don't really film days when I'm really, really sad. Not that I have days where I'm really, really sad. They happen once in a blue moon, but I don't, I don't really film when I'm having a bad day because it's just the last thing that I want to do. And lastly, you spend less than two hours a day on your phone. That's definitely not true. I spend way too much time on my phone. If I'm not studying and if I'm not at medical school and whatever, I feel like my entire life outside of that lives on my phone. You know, YouTube comments and analytics. Now that I'm on TikTok posting daily, we've got Instagram. What else have we got? WhatsApp, Facebook messages constantly coming through. I spend way too much time on my phone. <laughs> I need to cut that down if anything. And that is YouTube and social media done. All right, let's talk about life. Surely a fun topic. My assumption is that you are thriving in lockdown because of the ability to study more. The fact that we had a lockdown is probably the main reason, well, it is without a doubt, the main reason I was able to spend so much time studying for the USMLE Step 1 exam. If I had to balance going to medical school, going to placement, having med school exams and assignments, 
plus studying for step one, I could not have done it in such a short period of time that I did. Thriving in lockdown, definitely not. I absolutely, I'm not having fun in lockdown. I wish everything was back to normal, but of course it does lend itself to more time spent at home, more time able to study, more time able to work on these YouTube videos, etc. My assumption is that you secretly don't sleep much, but film it for the video and that way you look normal, but you can also get all your to-do list checked off. Um, I'm very open about how much I sleep. I talk about it in pretty much every video. The last thing I do before I sleep is I set my alarm for seven hours from whatever the time is now, and then I put it on my side table and it wakes me up in seven hours from then. I don't like to sleep more because I want to get up and start working on my to-do list and working all the things that I want to do. And yeah, I just don't really value sleep too, too much. There's a minimum amount that I need, which is about six, six and a half hours. And then if I meet that, then I'm good to go. For example, today I had my alarm set for nine because I slept late at two and I woke up at seven, two hours before my alarm. So I just got up and started my day two hours early, which is great because now I have an extra two hours in my day. So yeah, I'm very open about how much I sleep. Assumption, you barely talk to your family during med school. I don't think that's the case. I definitely could talk to my family more, but I think I do a fairly good job of keeping in touch and calling them uh, pretty regularly. My assumption is that you're finally living the life you always wanted to. You're perfect with your studies, career, and as well as your personal life. I feel like I need to knock wood a bajillion times. I just talked about this in one of the previous questions, but yeah, I'm, I'm very, very happy in all aspects of my life. If you're watching this and you have some wood next to you, please knock it on my behalf. Uh, you do not enjoy going out to a lot of parties, but if you are going out with your friends, and close ones you have a good time i love parties house parties are the best place to be i love going to clubs i love going to bars i really really enjoy that scene we don't get to do it at all now because we're in lockdown but otherwise we don't get to do it too much because we're in medical school and there's a lot of things to do <laughs> a lot of studying to be done and placement to go to but i absolutely love going out one of my favorite activities and pastimes um you don't worry about the future that much and don't get paranoid if things don't go as planned p.s love the content you're always inspiring and alexia is a cutie love her yes alexia is a massive cutie thank you for the lovely comment i don't get worried about the future and I don't get paranoid if things go to plan. That's absolutely true. I do not plan that far ahead into the future because things change literally like this. And you know, if I make a big plan and then it changes, that's so possible to happen. And so I don't like to think too far ahead. I plan for what I'm about to do right now, what I'm about to do today, general plan about the next week. I don't even think about the next month, like not at all. Everything happens on a short term basis and I just focus on what's in front of me. My assumption is you don't take all your medications as often as you described in your 50 facts about me video. I am so bad at taking my asthma medication. It's, it's actually embarrassing. As an asthmatic, you take two types of inhalers. One is a reliever, which alleviates symptoms that you're having right now. And then the other one is a maintainer. And this is what actually treats your asthma and helps the inflammation go down and your secretions go down. This is what you need to take every single day. And this is only what you take when you have symptoms. I am terrible at taking this. In fact, I have not taken this for like the last year or so, which is so bad. And I am a silly, silly goose for not taking my medications properly. Do not follow me. Assumption, people think that you look like PewDiePie. I get these comments all the time. People are like, you look like PewDiePie and you look like Liam Hemsworth. These are the two comments I get the most. Even back at university, I'll never forget. I was at a frat party once and someone walked up to me and they're like, Liam Hemsworth. Oh my God, it's Liam Hemsworth. I didn't even know who he was before I heard that. I think PewDiePie is a very good looking man same with Liam Hemsworth and so I will take that as a compliment you secretly have more than 24 hours in a day it probably looks like that from watching my videos um, I am constantly feeling like I don't have enough time in my day every single day I don't finish the to-do list that I made for myself every single day and I always feel like I'm running out of time so I wish I had just one more maybe two if I'm being greedy. You're not gonna settle in London. This is something that I am constantly battling with in my life. I don't know where I want to live for the rest of my life. And I feel like once I settle down somewhere, I kind of have to stay there because of the nature of my career. So I'm really, really not sure. It's something I'm still thinking about and debating inside. And yeah, hopefully I figure that out sooner rather than later. But basically London, US and Canada are probably the places I'm considering most. You never sleep in, even on weekends. Please explain how do you stay up late? That is very true. I never sleep in and the never will have a little asterisk next to it that says that that is true, let's say 95% of the time. The only times I sleep in are if I have had like a series of nights in a row where I've slept like five and a half, six hours, six and a half. And then I'm like, okay, you know what? You need to catch up on sleep, sleep for your eight and a half, nine hours or whatever. But otherwise, like I said, set my alarm for seven hours, put it on my side table and I go straight to bed. You've never been in a fight with your twin sister when you were kids. Nor and I have been in plenty of fights as kids. She has bitten a chunk of skin out of my back. I have thrown a chair like this at her, like across the room. I think we even got into a fist fight once. <laughs> so we've had our fair share of fights as kids. 
um, over very stupid things. But now as adults, we're, we're very happy together. You hate time-wasting people. Yes, I do. I hate wasting other people's time and I hate people wasting my time. Like I said before, every single day, I feel like I don't finish all the things that I want to do. So if we add on to that, somebody wasting my time or me wasting someone's time, that's a big no-no. Nora Karma says, how does it feel to have such an amazing, talented and humble sister? Who is that? If you'd have a day off, you'd rather spend it with pre-planned stuff than spontaneously. Yeah, absolutely. Every day off I've ever taken, I have planned exactly what I'm gonna do that day. One of my recent vlogs, uh, which was a productive day in my life without any studying, I had a plan for that whole day from the morning till the night. You learned a language at some point, but didn't practice it and forgot it almost completely. That is 1 million percent true with both French and Spanish. Spanish, I feel like I still have a little bit somewhere left in there, but French is completely gone. You schedule a cry session every once in a while. I probably should, but I don't. You don't like getting drunk. Definitely not. I tend to drink up until the point where I feel like I'm having a good time, everything is good, and then I stop. I really do not like the feeling of being drunk and I definitely do not like the morning after after you've had a big night out and you feel drunk. So I really do avoid that at all costs. You're a family guy. Uh, not yet, because I don't have a family, but I can't wait to have one. I think I will be a very good dad and I can't wait to be a dad at some point in the future. But obviously now it's not the right time. All right, so next let's talk about girlfriend. First of all, I've been receiving a whole bunch of comments asking if me and Alexia have broken up. No, we haven't, we're still together. Um, we just don't like to post too much about our lives online. Like the conversation I was having with you guys earlier, I like to keep my private life private um, and I don't wanna put everything that I do in my life online. So that's why you haven't been seeing too much of her lately. Okay, moving on to studying and productivity. We've got, I assume that you get easily distracted, but you're a master of resisting them. I definitely think I'm a master of resisting distraction, but honestly, the biggest and best thing that I do for resisting distraction is that I take my phone and I throw it somewhere far away from me where I can't see it or touch it. And that is 90% of my ability to stay undistracted. You don't actually study four hour blocks. I do actually study in four hour blocks and I've made a whole bunch of videos about why I think that's a great way of studying that works for me. Yeah, I definitely do. If I only have a two hour window to study between X and Y activities, and then I obviously don't study in four hour blocks. But if I plan a day of studying, I always study in four hour blocks. You take Ritalin or various smart drugs. I have never taken Ritalin or any other uh, performance enhancing drug or whatever. Taking drugs scares the hell out of me. The thought or the idea of not being in control of uh, having my heart racing or feeling super uh, focused or energized scares the living hell out of me. I, I don't ever want to feel that way. And so I stay away from these drugs at all times. Um, coffee is more than enough for me. Study environment is a big deal for you. If anything at your desk feels wrong, you'd rather fix it before continuing your studies. 100%, it will take me two minutes to organize my desk and make my study environment nice and neat and clean. And I would much rather do that before I sit down for four hours of studying, absolutely. My assumption is that you follow a very strict routine and never compromise with the study hours. Uh, yeah, I do. I plan pretty much everything in my life and I very strictly follow that plan. I compromise for very little reasons. Something really drastic has to come up to take me away from the activity that I've told myself I'm going to do. My assumption is that you were so unproductive during your school years that once you entered high school or college, you realized the need for productivity in your life and became addicted to the feeling of satisfaction upon having completed all your tasks. No, ever since high school, I've been super motivated. <laughs> I've been working really hard, studying very hard. Uh, it's not something that sort of happened when I reached university. When I reached university, I had so much more work and so much more need for time management that naturally I had to become a lot better at it. But I've always been very hardworking from when I was young. Shout out my mom and dad for that. You've always been clever. This is a good one that I like to talk about in every one of these videos that I do. I'm very, very adamant about the fact that I am not a clever person. I do not think I am smart. I do not think I am clever. What I do think is that I put in a lot of time, effort, and dedication into learning things and into you know succeeding at exams or whatever other like methods of assessing us for being clever is at university. I have friends who are very, very good at assimilating large amounts of information quickly without needing to study for long periods of time. I am not like that at all. I need to sit down and I need to study for long periods of time to get in that same amount of information. So I really don't think I'm clever or smart or anything like that. And I offset that by working very hard and studying for long periods of time and you know, doing all the work that I do. My assumption is that you never have unproductive days. That's honestly pretty true. Um, <laughs> there are very few times where I feel unproductive, where I'm not doing something that I've intentionally told myself that I'm going to do. And yeah, I feel pretty uncomfortable when that happens. Not gonna lie. I like having a plan and I like doing things on time that I've told myself I'm gonna do. You study because you're forced to. By who? 
I'm studying for me, I'm not studying for anyone else. My assumption is that the breaks in your study with me videos are just for us and you study for seven hours straight. Yeah, the breaks in my Pomodoro study with me videos are just for you guys. If you watch closely, you'll see that I'm doing the same thing before and after the break. I take plenty of my own breaks during my four hour block. I go to the bathroom, I get coffee, I get snacks, whatever. And that time that I spend away from my desk, if you watch closely is cut because I don't want you guys to watch me well, I'm not here. You will just be watching an empty space if I'm in the bathroom, if I'm getting coffee. But I always leave in the video me walking away and me coming back so that you know when it is that I've gone to the bathroom to get coffee or a snack. Uh, but the actual 20 minute Pomodoro uh, breaks are just for you guys. I study in four hour blocks. There is no way someone is doing construction right now midway through my filming. There's no way. It's not happening. Emily says you never got a under the average grade. My assumption is that you never failed the test or got low marks. You've never failed the test. Um, I have gotten two very poor grades in my life. One was 44% on a math class in high school and my teacher shouted at me so much in front of everyone when he handed me that paperback. And the other one is I got 55% in a physics test uh, in my first year of university. So those are the two lowest grades I've ever gotten and they are definitely an exception. Everything else has been very, very good, touch wood. My assumption is that you have a photographic memory. Definitely not. I definitely learn better with images, diagrams, flow charts, uh, you know, sketches. I learn much better like that than I do with audio or with reading something, but I definitely don't have a photographic memory. I wish I did. <laughs> My assumption is that you have a chip installed somewhere that makes you an absolute productivity machine. Can you guys see that? I don't think you can see it. I thought I was hiding it quite well. Sometimes you wonder whether you have toxic productivity. By the way, love your vids. Definitely. This is something that I thought about quite hard when, I don't know, there was like all this chatter online and videos coming out about toxic productivity and whatever, because if you look at my channel, it probably fits right into the definition of toxic productivity. Somebody who studies very hard and makes videos about them studying and things like that. So I've thought long and hard about this. I even wrote out a full video script about it, but I never ended up uh, releasing the video. Basically, my thoughts on the subject are that I'm very clear and I'm very honest with how much I study, when I study, how I study, my studying techniques, whatever. I'm so super honest and transparent about that. And I make it very clear that these are all things and techniques that work for me personally. I love doing this. I enjoy doing this. This is what works for me. And so if you watch my video and that stresses you out and you're like, oh my God, I need to work harder. I need to study more. And this is really stressful. Then please don't watch my videos. Maybe, maybe they're not for you. And that's okay. My videos aren't going to be for everybody. If you watch my videos and you see me studying and you're like, oh, wow, I want to be like that. I want to work harder. I want to motivate myself, blah, blah, blah then that's great. And that's why I'm making these videos to hopefully add value to somebody's life like that. If my videos are causing stress or anxiety to people who watch them, that makes me really sad. I, I have always hoped that that's not the case. But if that is, then, you know, maybe take a break from me or from other channels that post that type of content. If I watch something online that causes me stress, I will just not watch it anymore because I don't need that in my life. And if I cause you stress, then you don't need me in my life. And as sad as that is for me to say, I, I think that's where the reality of it is. Everyone is different. Everyone studies differently. Everyone's confident in their studies to different extents. So do whatever works for you. You know, if you enjoy this type of content, then fantastic. Welcome to my channel. Subscribe. And I hope you stay around. And if this content isn't for you, then that's okay. I'll catch you in the next one <laughs> or in a, in a different video in the future. Peace, love and positivity and all of that. I'll see you in another video. You sometimes enjoy studying. I absolutely love what I'm studying. I'm so fascinated by generally most things that I read and that I come across. Don't get me wrong, I'm so tired of studying just like every other medical student out there, but at least I enjoy it and I find it very interesting. You rest on weekends? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I work very hard during the week and then on the weekends I take a step back. Now, because exams are coming up very soon, I've been studying decently hard on the weekends as well. But yeah, I work a lot harder during the week for sure. Secretly a big procrastinator? No. Not at all. I procrastinate almost nothing in my life. You're more of a night owl. Absolutely not. I am the most morning person of all morning people that you will find. I don't wake up at like four or five or anything like that, but I love waking up early at like seven, um, getting up and being active and doing things in the morning. I get very, very sleepy and tired at like midnight and then I need to go to bed. So I'm definitely a morning person. You never struggle with exam anxiety. You rarely get stressed about your studies because you are so organized. You know, exams, medical school, assignments, whatever, that stresses me maybe like 10% of like stress in my life. I rarely get stressed about those things. Like you said, partially because I'm so organized and I plan so much and I work so hard. I study so much for my exams and in preparation for these things. And once you've done that much studying and that much work and that much prep, how could you be stressed? Like for my upcoming exams now, they're very, very big exams that are going to be very, very important for me. But all I can do, the only thing in my control is to study as hard as I possibly can for them. Let me show you. So for example, with this timetable that I have, um, you can see this one is now finished. So I've done all those days of studying and now I have 
these days of studying coming up as well. So by the time I reach the test day, where is it? Over here. By the time I reach test day, I will have studied as much as I possibly could have. If I actually do all of this, that's it. I've done everything within my control. I've done everything that I could have possibly done. So there's nothing for me to be stressed about. If I do well, which I probably will based on how much studying I've done, then that's great. And if I don't do well, well, that's gonna be really sad and I'll work on and focus on how I can fix that in the future. But I've done everything that I can. There's nothing more for me to do, so I can't possibly feel stressed. That's why I like to think about it anyway. All right, next, let's tackle high school. My assumption is that you had a great childhood. Growing up in Greece was incredible. I have very fond memories of my childhood. I am so grateful and thankful for everything that I had, all my experiences. Um, I would definitely agree with that statement. My assumption is that in high school, you must have been very overweight and then you controlled your diet and got lean. I think I'm blessed with my genetics in that I've always been sort of like a thinner, leaner, lankier limbs, body type. And in fact, I struggle to put on weight and I need to eat a lot and hit the gym very hard to put on muscle mass. So I've been very luckily blessed with those types of genes. So not quite. You've never cut classes in your grade school years. Yeah, I skipped pretty much no classes in high school. I think I skipped maybe one or two in my final year or something like that, but no, I wouldn't have dreamed of it. My parents would uh, have not been happy with me at all. You were a super popular kid in school that everyone liked and wanted to be friends with. Not very true at all. I had a very close group of friends who I really, really liked. We mostly just played video games and did our own thing, hacked and jailbroke our iPods and were really interested in tech and things like that. I definitely wasn't one of the like popular kids that all the girls were like hunting after or whatever. But uh, yeah, I'd say I was really nice and everyone would have wanted to be in friends with me. I don't think I like pushed anyone away or anything like that. You've never really struggled at school and you've always been a straight A student. Yeah, this is true. I've gone in straight A's throughout all my high school years, most of my uh, university degree as well and in medical school now. I've always worked very, very hard for exams. I've always studied very hard. I always bring up the fact that I've never gone into an exam feeling unprepared, literally ever. My next exam coming up after I've done all this studying, how could I feel unprepared? I will have done literally everything that I could have. And so that's what I always tell myself, study your very best, prepare as much as you can, and then whatever happens, happens. You've never received detention. <laughs> Funny you guys say this. Um, I have spent more time in detention than I have outside on the playground in the field. Like I have been in detention so many times. I've been held back after high school so many times. All me and my friend group did was laugh and cause havoc and uh, just be a nuisance probably to teachers. I've had infinite detentions in my time in high school. <laughs> I'm, I'm offended that you would assume this about me. Absolutely not. So money, my assumption is that you are wealthy. My assumption is you are a rich guy. You're from a rich family. Are you rich? You were born into a rich family. Quite affluent parental background. You're well financially. You're from a wealthy family. You're very rich. You're a millionaire. All right guys, so I definitely grew up in a privileged background. I definitely was very lucky to not have to worry about things like you know food, a roof over my head, electricity bills, water bills, anything like that. I'm eternally grateful for everything that my parents provided for me as a child. At the same time, I am nothing like what you guys probably think about when you think of our of money, what you see on YouTube and Instagram and things like that. That's absolutely not at all how we are. And then since I've started this YouTube channel, I've had a bunch of extra income that I'm able to spend on things that I want in life, mostly electronics, as you guys probably see on my desk. You might look at my desk and see 10,000 pounds worth of electronics and think to yourself, oh my God, this guy is so rich. He has so much money, blah, blah, blah. But this is where I choose to spend my money. These are the things that I think bring tons of value to my life. And I would be so happy to spend my money on. I don't really spend money on uh, expensive dinners or clothes or you know shoes or I don't know what else people sp spend their money on but for me electronics is where I love to spend my money because they bring me such an insane return on investment they add so much value to my life that it's a very easy spending decision for me to buy a Mac mini for editing or these speakers for listening to music or you know this podcast arm and podcasting microphone these are all very easy spending decisions for me to make because they provide so much value in my life so growing up my parents provided pretty much everything that I have and could have wanted in my life. And I am eternally grateful and thankful for that from them. And it's part of the reason that I'm so hardworking, I'm so motivated and that I, you know, I'm so disciplined in everything that I do. It's because I've seen what my parents did to provide me with the comfortable lifestyle that I had as a kid. And I want to provide that exact same lifestyle to my children in the future. One of the things that I'm most scared about in life is that I won't be able to provide for the people that I love and for my family moving forward. And so I work very hard now and you guys always see me being productive and working and you know being 
studious and everything like that because I want to mitigate that risk as much as possible. I want to set myself up to be in as best of a position as possible for success to be able to provide for my family in the future. So yeah, that's part of where my motivation comes from for everything that I do. And so that is a good segue for us to jump into motivation. We've got you seldom feel unmotivated. Yeah, that's absolutely true. You know, anytime I feel unmotivated or unproductive or anything like that. I'm honestly reminded uh, by my dad who he went to two universities at the same time studying engineering and law. He has had to flee three wars in his life, moving countries, changing jobs. Whenever I think about my problems and what I'm going through and if I'm feeling unmotivated or unproductive, I'm like, Actually, no, I have no right to feel that way. My dad has been through an infinitely harder time than me and he worked so, so, so hard to give me the life that I have now and for me to enjoy everything that I enjoy now. And I want to do the same for my kids. And so I almost never feel unmotivated. If there's something that I need to do, I just get it done. If there's any work that needs to be done, I just get it done. That's how I live most of my life. My assumption is that you feel guilty each time you take a break and feel accountable to someone. I feel 0% guilty when I'm not working because I work very hard. And so the time that I don't spend working, I'm very fine with taking a break and enjoying myself and having fun and relaxing. I don't really feel accountable to anyone. The work that I do and the studying that I do and you know this YouTube channel and whatever, all these things I'm doing for me, I'm not doing them for anyone else at the end of the day, you know? Who's gonna benefit from all this work and studying that I'm doing? Me and my future family. And so I'm motivated by myself and by wanting to work harder to be able to do everything that I want to do in this life, you know, provide for my family, be able to take nice vacations and nice breaks. And that's really why I'm always working because I want to be able to do all of those things in the future. Not an assumption, but would love to know what gets you up from bed when you feel completely unmotivated. I'm just gonna sound super unrelatable when I say this, but I can honestly say I, I have not woken up and felt like this. Even when I was studying for the USMLE Step 1 exam, and I was like, four months in of studying eight to 10 hours a day. When I woke up in the morning, yes, I was super like bummed out that I had to continue studying and sit down and do this again. And I was like, it was such a difficult time in my life, but I don't, I wouldn't say I felt unmotivated because I knew that I just had to do what I had to do and I had to get up and study for this exam. You know, it was just an important thing that I had to do. So I don't really think I felt unmotivated. I, if I have to study, then I have to study. If I have to work, then I have to work. If I have to chill and play video games, then I have to chill and play video games. And I don't really think about motivation in that sense. There's just things I need to get done and things that I don't need to get done. And I like slot them into my day, however they need to fit in. My assumption is that sometimes, even though you're organized and time obsessed, you feel drained, exhausted, and rethink your decision. Yeah, I definitely feel drained and exhausted at different parts of the day and different parts of my week and my life. Yeah, constantly working and moving from one project to another and feeling like you're always running out of time and that there's not enough time to do everything that you want definitely gets exhausting. And you know, that's when it's important to take some time off, to take a break, to relax, to do something else, to go for a run. And then I sort of reset and then start my days again. You've never dealt with mental illness? Yeah, I think that's pretty fair assumption. I don't think I have. I, I know quite a few people who have dealt with and are dealing with different mental illnesses, whether that be depression or anxiety and other things of the sort. And yeah, I, I can't say that I've felt that way. You are the hardest working person you know. If I'm not the hardest working person I know, then I'm definitely up there amongst the hardest working people that I know. You know, that's one of the things that I can actually control. I can control how hard I work and how much effort I put into something. What I can't control is the result, how successful that thing is or how much value it provides to somebody else. But what I can control is how much I work and what effort I put into something. And so I always try and work as hard as I can in anything that I'm doing. Not as perfect in managing time as you show in your videos. I, I am. The same way I manage time in my videos is exactly how I manage my day-to-day -day life. And if you don't believe me, you can ask Alexia about that. You are robotic in the way that you just sit down and work without any extrinsic motivation. I definitely think this is true. And this comes back to the question that I just answered before. If I need to do something, I'll just get it done. It's just going to happen and I'm going to do it. I don't procrastinate. I don't really think, oh no, why do I have to do this? I'm so annoyed that I have to do this. I don't really go through those thinking processes. Like if I write it down on my to-do list, then I wake up in the morning, I look at my to-do list. I'm like, okay, this is the next thing that I have to do. And I just do it. I don't think about it for a second. Almost all my motivation comes from intrinsic, comes from within. Uh, Cause I'm at the end of the day, I'm doing all this for myself. I'm working hard for myself, for me to be successful in the future not really for anybody else. You're not as productive and motivated as you seem. I, I I am as productive and motivated as I seem in my videos. Of course, I have down days where I'm not having as good of a time as I am smiling and laughing on the camera. And I do not film those days. I've already talked about that in a previous section. For the most part, 95% of the time, I would say 
I am as productive and motivated as I seem. Do you ever just want to lay on your bed and do nothing for hours? I honestly don't. I, I cannot relate to this feeling. I have laid on my bed and scrolled on TikTok for like 20 minutes because I set a timer for 20 minutes, but like I, I really can't relate to this feeling. I just don't. I, I love doing the things that I'm doing and I love doing the things on my to-do list for the most part besides like annoying admin things, but no, not really. All right, let's do a nice and light one, food. My assumption is that you're caffeine dependent to get stuff done. I am super caffeine dependent uh, in my life. I like to have a warm drink, whether that's tea or coffee or a cold drink, just something to drink like at all times of the day. And I always used to think, yeah, I can, I can be fine without coffee. I don't need coffee until I didn't have it one or two days in the morning. And I really realized how much I was missing that coffee and how much I wanted it. So this is probably true as much as I don't want it to be. I heard a rumor that when it's your turn to wash the oven trays, you just wipe them with a paper towel. <laughs> so uh, Noor, my lovely sister living two doors down, the most annoying thing we have to do in the kitchen is clean the big trays that we put into the oven. And so we have like this running tally of whose turn it is to clean the trays on different days or whatever. And sometimes if I'm feeling very, very lazy, I won't wash them and I just wipe them down with a paper towel but don't tell her that I confirmed it. That you're sick of morning toast and eggs, but productivity says otherwise. I'm actually not sick of it. Um, I'm one of those people where I could probably eat the same thing every day for a long time. I absolutely love eggs on toast. I feel like there's so much variety and so many different things you can do for eggs and toast, but also productivity and efficiency definitely plays a role. It's something that I'm used to making. I know how to make it and I can make it very quickly. Like eating breakfast is just something that I have to do to move on with the rest of my day. So I just take that box, get it out of the way. And then I move on to things that I actually wanna do like YouTube and studying and med school and friends and social life and activity and blah, blah, blah. You really like eggs and toast? Absolutely. If you were forced to eat one thing for the rest of your life, it would be fruits. That's a really good assumption. Either fruits or the classic thing that everyone says is sushi. But I love, love fruits. I can devour massive quantities of fruit very easily in short periods of time. And I always say the same thing, eating fruits is like drinking water. They're like 99.9% .9 water, so I can eat so much of them. That you don't eat as healthily as you portray in your vlogs. No, that's not true. I eat quite healthily 95% of the time. I do order takeout every now and again, uh, probably once, maybe twice a week. But generally speaking, I eat as healthy. Whatever I film in my vlogs is what I'm doing in real life. That's, that's just the bottom line. You want six pack abs, by summer, yet you eat Pop-Tarts for dinner. <laughs> in fantastic contrast to what I just said in the previous question, basically Georgina, as you've seen in plenty of vlogs, uh, she's with me on peripheral placement. And she told me that I'm going to get fat when I go to peripheral placement. And I told her I'm not gonna get fat. I promise you I'm not gonna get fat. And so I've been working out every other day while I've been on peripheral placement, but I also bought Pop-Tarts and I've been nibbling on them, cheating. So that's that. Medicine. One of my favorite topics, as you guys know, let's start. You seem to really love your emergency medicine rotation. So I assume that you want to be an ER physician. Um, emergency medicine is definitely one of the things that I'm considering for a specialty in the future. I absolutely loved the rotation. I felt that it was so varied. It was very hands-on, you know, people were constantly walking through the door and you got to see so many different presentations. I definitely really enjoyed it and I'm considering it in the future. What made you decide medicine was your calling? Has it been everything you hoped or expected it to be? I've said this before, but I always felt in my life that I wanted to be a doctor, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a doctor, but I didn't quite know what that meant. And then the more work experiences that I did, the more shadowing that I did in the hospital, that's when I kind of realized what does the job of a doctor actually look like on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think at its core, the reason that I've wanted to study medicine for so long and why I'm so adamant on pursuing medicine is I don't think I will get the same level of gratification and satisfaction from a career doing anything else. I think I could be someone who works in an office. I could be a snowboarder. I could be, uh, I don't know what other jobs there are. There are a lawyer, an accountant, an engineer. I could be those things, but I don't think anything would provide me nearly as much gratification and satisfaction as working with patients and treating patients and talking to patients. I think medicine is such a unique, career that I haven't actually done yet. I'm still a medical student, but I believe and I hope that it will be everything that I have in my head. Um, I think it's so unique in that you get to talk to so many different people every day. Your main job is to help people and to make people feel better. I, like what more could you ask for in life? Like what better job could you have where you spend 90% of your time helping other people and treating other people? And I haven't started working as a doctor, but if it's anything like my experience has been in medical school, then yeah. It's, it's been pretty great. Obviously there's pros and cons to everything, but 
I think it's been, been pretty great. There's been a time you really wanted to quit med school. No, I have not felt that way. I haven't experienced that. However, I have experienced imposter syndrome uh, in my fourth year of medical school. I've just sort of realized like, oh my God, I'm supposed to be an actual doctor soon who is doing all these things, taking the place of these doctors that I'm looking at and I'm shadowing when I'm on placement. Yeah, I've definitely felt to myself like, can I actually do that? Do I have what it takes to do this? Will I be able to go there? Because where I am right now is certainly not how these doctors are acting on the wards and I don't have all the knowledge that they have. So I've gone through a bit of uh, imposter syndrome times throughout the course of this year. But I keep reminding myself that, you know, being a doctor is still now a year and a half away or a year away. I have plenty of time to evolve, to learn, to adapt, to become like that. You know, if everyone else has done it, everyone else has gone through medical school and gone on to be doctors, I can do it as well. So that's what I keep trying to remind myself whenever I feel like that. Is medicine tougher than you'd think? I honestly think people make out medicine to be way harder than it actually is. I think the stigma around medical school and being a medical student and you know what it takes to be a doctor and, and go through medical school is a lot more like built up in people's minds and a lot more like scary. People make it out to be a lot more than it is. The most difficult part of medical school is time management and organization and you know dealing with the massive amounts of content and commitments that you have. But as far as like true, true difficulty in the theory and the concepts and the understanding, I don't think that's where the difficulty of a medical degree lies. You have to be super motivated. You have to be really hardworking, I think, to get through medical school with a like relatively easy time. If you don't have good time management skills, if you don't have those personalities or characteristics, then it's, you can still do it, but I just think it'll be a lot harder. You studied very hard during your undergrad and did not go out or, so, or socialize much. This is very, very true for my first two years of undergrad. I was so overwhelmed with the amount of studying and courses and assignments that we had that I literally just locked myself in my room and studied so, so, so hard. That was not fun and I do not recommend it and it was not the right thing to do. I way overcompensated because I felt so overwhelmed and I didn't really know how to handle the situation. And looking back, I would have done so many things differently. But my third and my fourth years of my first degree were so much better because uh, I finally learned how to cope with all these like studying strategies and I fixed sort of the problems that I had. And then medicine has been the exact opposite of this. I've done so much, so much fun stuff in medical school. There's definitely time to go out and be an individual and have your hobbies and socialize and do anything that you want to do and do medical school at the same time. There's enough time for both. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. You don't regret studying medicine, not one bit. You think you're some hotshot because you go to medical school. I had never experienced this before, but when I came to the UK, there is this sort of like stigma around medical students and being a medical student where people think everyone's so proud to be a medical student and wear the stethoscope around their neck and sort of show off the fact that they're a medical student. I don't think that's the case at all, honestly. I think the stigma is more than the actual real life situation is. I definitely don't think I'm a hotshot because I go to medical school. I'm incredibly happy at medical school and I have a great time there and I think it's the right choice that I made, but it doesn't make me better than anyone else. And I, and I think most people in medical school don't think they're better than anyone else just because they go to medical school. I think other people think that about medics, probably because there's a few people like that who just stand out above everyone else. You actually think med school isn't worth the stress. It's absolutely worth the stress. Any degree you do in your life is going to be stressful. Any career you pursue is going to be stressful. The stress is always going to be there. You just need to balance that out with something that you find brings you enough happiness and value and satisfaction to make the stress worth it. So I absolutely think it's worth the stress. So burnt out, question mark. I definitely felt burnt out after I studied for the US Assembly Step 1 exam. So in my, at the beginning of my fourth year of medical school, from like September until January, February now of 2021, I could not study for the life of me. I couldn't pick, I couldn't sit down and read a book. I couldn't do past paper questions. I was struggling so much to study because I was so burned out. The months that I spent studying for the US Assembly Step 1 exam, took everything I had in my life, in my body to complete. And it was very difficult to start studying again. And really only recently, when I started studying for these exams, have I started to be able to study again properly. I was very burnt out, but it's okay. What I did was I acknowledged that, you know, I'm really burned out from studying right now. And what I need to do is give myself a bit of a break, take a little bit of a step back, let that burned out emotion go away, focus on other things, do other things, and keep up your studying a little bit every now and again, but don't kill yourself to keep going. Give yourself that break and that time that you need, and then come back to it. All right, and finally, last section, little bonus section or miscellaneous. Let's go through that. You eat green veggies as a snack. You know, one of the, one of the funniest things, is that when I go to a friend's house, I always take food with me because I'm always snacking and I always wanna eat something. And my snacks of choice are celery sticks, uh, baby carrots, 
or bell peppers, like red and orange or yellow bell peppers. Those are like my three favorite vegetables to eat because they're super crunchy, super snacky, and they're just the perfect, perfect texture. And my friends always make fun of me because I'm eating like a rabbit whenever I'm over at their houses, but it is what it is. It's my favorite snack. My assumption is that you don't know where home is. That honestly could not be closer to the truth. I am so confused about where to call home where to call my people. I am ethnically Jordanian-Palestinian. I was born in Canada. Uh, I grew up in Greece for most of my life. Then I went back to Canada for my first degree and now I'm studying and living in the UK. I struggle so much with where my home is. I feel that like ethnically my people, where I come from is Palestine, is Jordan. My culture I feel like is very Arabic, but also mixed in with some Greek. And then I was born in Canada and I hold a Canadian passport. And then I lived in Canada for four years and I feel drawn to there. And so I really don't know where I'm from. I feel like I'm pulled in all directions. To save myself the stress from thinking about this, I like to tell myself that I'm just a global citizen. I'm a citizen of the world. And I feel like I'm a little bit from everywhere. I don't need to belong to any one country. I don't, I don't feel patriotic to any one country, but I'm very proud of my Arabic roots and my Arabic ethnicity, for sure. Uh, my assumption is that you can speak Arabic. I speak in English. My assumption is that you never eat fast food. No, absolutely not. I love fast food. I definitely do. I just don't eat it very often because I'm trying to stay in shape. I'm trying to work out and be healthy, but I love fast food. Uh, my assumption is that the orange dog doesn't have any story behind it. I know I am right. What do you think, Karma Medic? My question for you is, have you found the orange dog in this video? Mm, mm. What do you think about that? And if you haven't, you need to look harder. I assume that you only eat healthy stuff and you never eat snacks like chips and cola, etc. No, I definitely do eat unhealthy snacks. I just try to limit them as much as possible. You love to teach. I absolutely love to teach. One of my most favorite things is being a mentor for uh, other students that are in lower years than me because you know having someone guide you or help you through something that they've already been through is absolutely invaluable. Um, I love to teach. I love to share knowledge and talk about things that I'm passionate about, which is why I have this YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, absolutely. And I think I'm gonna harness this energy and this passion into making some courses in the future and teaching things that I'm really excited about. You invest in stocks or Bitcoin. I invest in both stocks and Bitcoin and touch wood, both of them have been doing very well. I've been investing in stocks for a very long time. Any extra cash that I made when I was at university from working part-time jobs and things like that, I would invest straight into stocks. And then cryptocurrency is obviously something that's been a little bit more recent. But I know Ali Abdal has made a fantastic video about investing in stocks for beginners. You should watch that video and you should invest any spare income or disposable cash that you have in stocks because it's literally free money over time. Putting your money in a bank is a terrible place to store it. It's not going to grow over time and investing in sort of the safer stocks is a great place to put your money. Having said that, and this is not financial information, blah, 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 disclaimer, do your own thing with your money. This is just my opinion and what I do. Your favorite color is orange. Um, my favorite color is actually red, but the theme of my YouTube channel is mostly orange. Uh, so a little bit of a misnomer or misconception there. Uh, my favorite color is definitely red, but I like to include a lot of orange in my videos. You hate exercising, but do it anyways. Absolutely not. Exercising is one of my favorite things to do. I love running. I love running so much, hitting the gym and lifting weights. It's such a great way to relieve stress, to clear your mind, to start, to start anew. I love, love, love exercising. You own 19 hoodies. Uh, I think I probably own more than that, to be honest with you. I'm trying to collect a hoodie of every color because I love wearing hoodies. Um, and yeah, I probably own closer to 30 than 19. You have a hidden tattoo you haven't told us about. I would love to have a tattoo and I've thought about it so many times and I've come up with designs and I've printed them out and I've even walked into a tattoo shop and shown them the design that I wanted and I've come so, so close, but I haven't been able to do it. I haven't been able to convince myself to get that tattoo because I get bored of things very, very fast and I move on to different projects and different ideas very, very quickly. And every time I've thought of a tattoo design, I've gotten bored of it after a couple of months. And so I haven't been able to permanently put it on my body just yet. You don't want kids as they decrease productivity. Of course not, I, I definitely want kids. I can't wait to be a dad, uh, but at the right time. Is it true that you like playing video games in your spare time? I love playing video games. Video games are such a great way to pass time. There's, I, I love, I love, I love video games. Some of my favorites right off the top, we've got Last of Us 2, Until Dawn, the Uncharted series, Call of Duty, pretty much all of them, but Modern Warfare 2 specifically. Spyro, Crash Bash, Ratchet and Clank, Beyond Good and Evil, 
I don't know, there's so many. I love video games. You have a false teeth. When I was a kid, I went down a water slide backwards and I smacked my head at the bottom of the water slide. And when I stood up in the pool, it was just red all in front of me. There was blood gushing out of my mouth and I messed up a lot of teeth in my mouth at the time. This one here broke, as you can probably see. You can see that like line, that is a fake part of my tooth there. I had to have a root canal in it and I had a whole bunch of work done in my mouth after that event. So yeah, I have uh, a little bit of one false tooth. All right, and that is it. I have answered all those assumptions. This video is one hour and 55 minutes long, which is insane. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope it gave you a little bit more insight into me as a person and my personality. Thank you so much for following me on this journey to three quarters of a million subscribers. Make sure you subscribe for more. Tell your friends to subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one. Peace.